Now let's get into them. So the next section is about hazardous drugs. So hazardous drugs are defined by the American Society of Health System Pharmacists in 1990 as being a drug which displays one or more of the following characteristics, which we had just went over. Uh, we have fertility issues. Uh, they are carcinogenic. Uh, they could cause serious organ damage. So I would get to know those. And anyone handling these hazardous drugs that are able to have children needs written documentation that they understand the risk with these medications. So these include pharmacists, technicians, any nurses, and any lab staff that will be in the facility that will come in contact with these medications. So there are a good amount of hazardous drugs out there. Here are some to be noted. I would pause the video right now and uh, just go over these, get a little familiar with them, uh, write them down and make sure you're, you know, that, you know, when handling these, you have to take these certain precautions that we're going to go into later on in the video. Before we get started, we're going to go over a couple basic compounding terms. First one being the primary engineering control, PEC for short which is basically the fume head area. We have the secondary engineering control, SEC, which is the buffer room that houses most of the PECs. We have closed system drug transfer device, CSTD, and these are used to keep hazardous drugs contained inside the device, and they prevent spills and fumes from leaking out. We have the compounding aseptive Containment Isolator, which is an isolator glove box for hazardous drugs. We have Compounding Aseptic Isolator, CAI, Compounded Sterile Products that come in IV drug bags will come in either a small or large bag. The Small Volume Parenteral, SVP, is the IV bag that contains up to 100 ml while the large volume parenteral contain, can hold over 100 ml. So I would know that distinguish, distinguishment, excuse me. Uh, they might ask you, you know, for this medication, uh, which one you would use. Moving on, we have the International Standards Organization, the ISO, which is a non-governmental organization who make the development, manufacturing, and supply of products and services more efficient, safer, and cleaner. And if they give you a number, then all you have to know that the lower the number, the cleaner the area is. Now the two divisions of compounding, we have sterile versus non-sterile. So for sterile compounding requirements, uh, we're going to have the ISO air. Uh, this is basically going to measure the quality of the air. Most contaminants come from the staff working at the compounding pharmacy. So we want to make sure the staff understands the compounding rules and regulations for sterile products. And because of this, uh, when working, uh, all workers must have at least six inches from the fumes front edge. Now for non-sterile preparations, they should not be near the sterile areas. And when preparing these preparations, we have two types of water, basically tap water and purified water. We're going to be going over the hazardous drug requirements. So hoods and buffer rooms used for compounding hazardous drugs usually begin with the word containment. So you'll see containment PEC short for CPEC, and containment SEC, short for CSEC. So for the SPEC, we're going to clean it with 70% isopropyl alcohol, IPA. And for the S, for the CSEC, the room where the SPEC is located. So we want to limit the hazardous medications to these two containment areas. And as you can see next, they both need negative air pressure. We need a compounding aseptive containment isolator. 
So the so this is basically a, another hood, um, but it's different from the hood being used in the CSEC. So air in the spaces used for hazardous drugs have required a CPH, which stands for air changes per hour, and is the number of times that the air is replaced in the room per hour. So for non-sterile hazardous drugs that are compounded, uh, they need at least a ACPH of 12, while sterile hazardous drugs need spaces with ACPH of at least 30 or higher. When handling these hazardous drugs, the pharmacy needs an external exhaust. Air that has been contain contained with the hazardous drugs should be externally exhausted, meaning the air should go out of the pharmacy. Um, and this is, like we just said, the air is moved out of the space and cannot be recirculated and returned to the room. It's sent outside and takes any contamination out with it. In a non-sterile hazardous room, the air should be externally ventilated or a redundant HIPAA filter could also be used. So under certain circumstances, a redundant HIPAA filter can be used instead of an external exhaust. Uh, this, an example of this are areas where a contaminated air exhaust can be placed due to a local park. Uh, that air is going to be very toxic. So if there's a park there with children, we don't want that air going into that park and contaminating those children. So there are alternatives if needed.